Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to making an impact with Zebu Nation and today we have for you what is the most important game in the history of our series and that is the 2019 MLS Cup Final. That's right we have what is widely considered, mostly considered, the championship, the true championship of Major League Soccer. None of this supporter shield stuff. That's for nerds. Get out of here. We're talking about MLS Cup playoff championship. It is none other than your Montreal Impact versus the Houston Dynamo. So let's get into it. Let's see how we got here. Hopefully you've been watching up until now. But if not, you can take a look at the... Uh, Stages? Is that what we should look at? Oh, uh, no, that's... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I wish there was, like, a full playoff, like, uh, tree. Is there? Can you see a tree? Oh, no, we can't see a tree, apparently. That stinks. Maybe in the Eastern Conference we could see a tree? Yeah, there we go. There's a tree. So, in the first round in the semifinals, we beat the Columbus Crew. Well, first... We had to win a wild card game versus Philadelphia just to get into the playoffs. Then we beat Columbus 4-1 in total. Big upset there because Columbus was the best team in the Eastern Conference. Then we managed to sneak by the New York Red Bull 4-3 in the Eastern Conference Finals. And that brings us to today's matchup in the MLS Cup versus Houston Dynamo. They're pretty good this season. They were second in the league overall in the Supporters' Shield. They finished second. So they had a very good season. So it's no surprise that Houston is there. It's a little bit of a surprise that we're there. But as you know, anything can happen in the playoffs. And anything did. We pulled some upsets and we got in there. So let's take a look at Houston. What sort of competitions have they won? They won the MLS Cup twice before. They've also been runners-up twice before. So Houston has some history in this competition. They've won the Supporters' Shield. You know, they've been runners-up twice in the Supporters' Shield. And they've won the Western Conference twice. Hmm. Apparently they were in the Eastern Conference at one time. Interesting. But anyway, they've won the Western Conference twice. And uh, they are historically, traditionally, a pretty solid team. Take a look at their transfers. What have they done this season? Not a lot. They picked up a bunch of uh, some draft picks early in the season from the waiver draft. A couple of uh, players from the super draft. They got one player from their academy, Colin Walker. 18 years old. He looks okay. Central midfielder nice first touch all right he's all right they picked up some free transfers gabriel farfin right defender american valued at six hundred thousand. he's all right jumping reach not so good but other than that he's okay lyndon gooch look at this he's a uh, guy who has played for the u.s national team only two caps but he's a pretty decent player uh he's a winger Good skills. You know, he's an all right player. There's definitely no problem adding this guy for free to your roster. That's pretty good. What did they do in the trades this season? Some interesting stuff. They got uh, Los Angeles' second round pick in the draft. They traded away a couple of picks for Zarek Valentin from Philadelphia. 28 years old. He's now playing for Seattle, so something happened to him. He got... He got traded away, so they traded for him from Philadelphia. Brought in Chris Clute. He's a pretty good player, 29 years old now. He's a, another fullback, defensive type player, but yeah, he's very good. So he'll give us some trouble. Um, they picked up our first round draft pick for their first round draft pick in the 2020. So this is the team that we swapped our picks with. 
I guess Houston was interested in trading up in this year's draft, and we were trading interested in trading out of this year's draft. Then they traded Valentin to Seattle for a first-round pick next year. So they were just swapping draft picks all over the place. But the big move in June, they picked up the central defender Walker Zimmerman, former FC Dallas, former LAFC, former Minnesota now, apparently. Yeah, so he was a stalwart there for FC Dallas. You know, getting some national recognition, getting on to the U.S. national team before making a move in the offseason to LAFC. Then LAFC traded him to Minnesota, and Minnesota traded him to Houston. But regardless of his sort of journeyman status currently, uh, he is a very, very solid central defender. I mean, he's big, he's strong, he can jump, he's got pretty good marking, tackling, heading. You know, there's nothing wrong with this guy. He's one of the better central defenders in MLS, no matter where he's at. So, you know, Houston, last year they had the offense. This year they shored up their defense. And honestly, they've had the offense this season, too. We look at, um, we got a update on Houston not too long ago. Let me see if I can find it in my email. Got all these signings. We got to talk about that at some point. We're not going to talk about it right now. But we have signed a ton of players. Mostly from our academy. Take a look at that. We're looking at some new staff members. Uh, let's see. Come on. You can do it. Why do these... There we go. Houston Dynamo scouting report. So you can see their starting lineup is pretty tough. Clute, Zimmerman, De La Garza, Iago. That's a tough back line right there. Seren, Cabezas, uh, Kyoto, Elise on the wing, Martinez at the Trek Artista, and then Benitez as the poacher. But as you can see here, they led all teams in scoring with 83 goals this season, 83% pass success. So they're a possession type team. You can see their mentality here is control. So, you know, we got to do some stuff for this team. Now, we look at their weaknesses here. Might be get some insight here. Decision-making, work rate, teamwork. Passing seems strange that that's a weakness. Leadership, aggression, goals against. So they've allowed several goals. Um... They're not aggressive, they don't work a lot, but they just sort of pass the ball around and score. So I think our high-pressure style might actually work versus Houston. If their decision-making is actually bad and their passing is actually suspect, if we outwork them, play aggressive, they might not be able to match our intensity. So that is the plan going into the MLS Cup. And that falls right into our usual strategy, form number two. Let's go. Look at all these players joining once the uh, once the transfer window opens. I mean, our academy basically had a golden generation. We had so many 18-year-olds. It's ridiculous. I mean, we already had a ton of players signed from the academy, but now we're signing a ton more. So we're going to have to make room for all these guys but also hopefully I can make a profit off some of these guys who want to you know not just sell them on but move them you know move these Canadians around so that they get more playing time because we can't play them all right there's so many of them coming out of our academy but if we can find them good homes like little lost puppies then that'll just help build the Canadian national team even more. we got to start being sort of a broker for these guys, get these guys out there and to team, to loving homes that will give them much playing time. So here we are, match preview. We're playing at BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston, Texas. Sold out, 22,000 capacity. Not a big stadium. But, you know, it is home for Houston. It'd be better if we could play the, you know, MLS Cup at a neutral site. But, you know, MLS isn't quite there yet. You know how, like in in England, they play a lot of the, 
important games at Wembley, right? It'd be nice if we could find a stadium like that, like the Super Bowl. You know, the Super Bowl is played at different stadiums around this around the country. So it'd be nice if MLS could reach that level where we could sell tickets in stadiums other than our own stadiums. But anyway, biggest strength for Houston is goals scored. Potential weakness is decisions. We looked at that. Wilmer Cabrera. We got a little beef with Wilmer. Every single time I load up a save, Wilmer Cabrera hates me, and I don't know why. Basically, I think it's because he's the coach for Houston, and I support FC Dallas. You know, most of my most of my coaches when I create them, I support FC Dallas because that's kind of the team I support in MLS, sort of. You know, it's at least the team that I pay attention the most because there's a podcast I listen to, basically. But anyway, got beef with Wilmer Cabrera. We have poor form, which is funny because his personal friend is Oscar Pereja, who is former coach of uh, FC Dallas. So it's interesting that they would have a rivalry. But look at Oscar Pereja. He's now going to be coaching Atlanta. They got that deal signed right after the season ended for Atlanta. So Oscar Pereja's got a new gig and a very good gig to be taking over Atlanta. So got some coaching moves going on here in MLS already. The offseason hasn't even started. Well, it started for a lot of people. It hasn't started for us yet because we're here in the cup. So let's get to it, right? Um, Logan Brown is the referee. No matches refereed this season. What? What? So his last match that he refereed was in the uh, uh, the MLS Super Draft Combine. X versus Control. That is crazy. Why would a lower division referee like this be uh, refereeing the MLS Cup Final? This is weird. I've never looked at referees before. I've never cared. He's got a nice rating, I guess, seven point two, but he hasn't uh, he hasn't done anything in a while since. <laughs> anyway, weird. It is gusty and sixty six degrees out. That's fine, no problems there. We can handle that. Let's submit our team. We got exact same team that beat Phil, uh, New York Red Bulls in the Eastern Conference Championship. We're going Dupuy on the bench. Mane, Pace, Toure, Rick Tran, Salmon, and Crepeau. We're going with the 4-4-2. Formed a lot of nice partnerships. We've got partnerships everywhere but central defense currently. Uh, let's see. Ball playing defender is what we want you to be. All right. Let's go, basically. Let's go. I don't have any more rousing speeches. This is just up to the players to do their thing. This is the cup final. Doesn't get any bigger than this, boys. Let's go. So, starting lineups. Sates in goal. He's tough to beat. Yago, De La Garza, Zimmerman, Klute. Tough defense. We looked at these guys. They started the exact same guys that they had in their summary. So, that's good. Our scouts have done their job. At least top goal scorer, 24 goals this season. It's pretty good. Average rating of 7.32. So he is obviously their top threat. T. Martinez. 11 goals, 13 assists, 7.59 rating. He is also very dangerous. Highest rating, most assists. Benitez, we got to watch out for him. He can score goals as well. As for us, should be a very familiar lineup to everybody. Lutweiler in goal. Taylor, Duvern. Fullbacks, Bruno and Jiguer in central defense. Piet and Andre in the midfield. Petrasso, Romero on the wings. Jackson Amell, Kyle Laren up top. The goal scores. Let's go, boys. What do we need to? What do we need to say? Um, we owe Houston for what happened last time. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. What sort of advice does Wilfred have for us? Pretty good advice. As always, close down on everybody. We shall do exactly that. 
I don't know if their fullbacks are going to come forward just yet. I mean, Iago does like to come forward. So does Clute. But we'll wait until they make a move before we uh, before we start doing that. Because their forwards are so much trouble that we got to watch out for them. This could be the last time we see Romero and Toure in impact jerseys. Do you have anything special? Um, I, I mean... I don't know if I could plan something special if I wanted to, so this is a dumb question, but I don't think this is the place for that. We're worried about winning the MLS Cup here. All right, so here we are. Look at all those Houston fans. Benitez. Martinez is going to get things rolling. Still no sound for some reason. At least no sound that I can hear. Maybe do I have my headphones turned down too low? Nope, there's just no sound coming out. Here's Elise. He gets the first shot. Lutweiler easily plucks that. I don't see a visitor's section right now, but I do see a, you know, several dots of blue in there. So maybe those are our fans scattered in. Went on StubHub and got some tickets. Anyway, here's the first highlight. First proper highlight. Martinez has it in the middle of the field. Looking to make a move. Gets it out wide to Kyoto. He misplays it, and Duvern is there for the first defensive play of the game. Iago's going to have to track it down and restart the offense. Going to pressure these boys. Cabezas going to get it forward. He beats Taylor. Elise on the move. He chunks that one into the 20th row. Into the second deck, even. Get out of here. The old upper decker. Here's Lutweiler setting the ball downfield. Uh, looks like Houston's going to gather it up. There's another misplay. Another good steal by Duvern, but he can't start the attack. Andre gets it to Romero. First ball forward, Kyle Lair, and he outmuscles Zimmerman. He's one-on-one. -on -one. There it is. The first goal of the cup goes to the impact, and Kyle Laren. This is it, boys. Championships. We can smell it. Let's go. You know, good bit of defending. Romero just, you know, trusting his teammate, plucking it forward. There's Laren just just beating everybody, holding him off. Yes, yes, yes. The pressure is getting to him. They don't have the work rate to keep up with us. Here's Petrasso sending it in. Laren's going to track it down, but he loses it to Clute. Clute's going to start the counterattack. Martinez, he's got men rushing forward. Great tackle by Duvern, but Cabezas recovers to Benitez out wide. He's looking, looking, looking. Sends it back post. Cabezas, Lutweiler is there. Whew. Good stop. Good stop. Did we know we... We're just, oh, there's our supporter section right there. Elise can't get ahead on it. Romero's going to chase it down. There we go. All right. Ten minutes. This is fine. We're up a goal. Ratings looking good, but now here comes Houston. They're starting to get some highlights. Benitez with a shot. Deflected. Let's go Go after it. Cabezas is going to out-hustle, but no. Free kick to Montreal. Something happened there. Foul, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? going to drink a tea. All right. 14 minutes. Here we go. We get a highlight. Taylor with the throw in on the far side gets it to Jackson. Forward. Ball's intercepted, but Petrasso gets it back post to Romero. Zimmerman heads it out of there. Zimmerman's pretty good at that, standing on the back line. Now, if you get him out in space, maybe he's not so good. But if he can just stand there like a statue and play central defense, he can make some moves, much like Elise sending it in. We head it out. Can Piet get there? No, he cannot. Taylor with a good tackle, but Clute has come forward now. Cabezas, Seren, Andre, you know, we're getting in the way of a lot of passes. This is good news, but we need to make the steals just like that. Andre to Petrasso. We're going to hit him on the counterattack. It's three on two going forward. Great pass to Kyle Laren. Laren could have been a little more patient with that, my man. All right, hang on. Uh, Chris Clute getting forward so we're gonna have to uh, close down on him unfortunately 
All right. Despite our lead, we've struggled to control possession. We need to try to retain possession. That might not be the worst idea, but I, I do like hitting them on the counterattack. Giger with a nice win. Andre, get it to Petrasso. Petrasso finds Kyle Lahren. There's Andre getting forward on the attack. The box-to-box -box midfielder. Hmm. Hmm. Would have appreciated a slightly better shot, but right now we got four shots, one on target. They got three shots, one on target. Seven fouls. That's sort of uh, what we do. You know, we're we're migrating away from basketball on grass, and we're getting a little toward closer towards hockey on grass. Martinez with a shot that's blocked. Yago with a shot that's blocked. And, uh, you know, we managed to hold on to our lead there. Yeah, we have become very physical in the second half. Well, I guess the fourth quarter, really. Sort of turn things around by getting a lot of fouls. <laughs> Martinez sends it wide. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's a thing that's worked. And if we got a rusty referee who isn't known for calling penalties, might as well get physical. Here's Petrasso. Sends one in from the corner. Laren to Piet with a shot on target, but Sights deflects it. Looking good. Let's keep it up. Keep the pressure up. Petrasso again. Bruno can't get ahead on it. It's hard to beat Zimmerman on that back post. Uh, Andre loses it. Bruno tries to recover it. Here is Houston on the counterattack. They got men going forward, but we got some men back in defense. Martinez one-on-one -on -one with it looks like Piet. Sends it back post for Elise, but he can't get there. Elise is being covered that was bruno and bruno wins it nice play my man good job good job bruno okay very nice helter skelter back and forth affair that's what we want i mean that's our kind of play um we need to get our guys in open field running up and down Get that fast break offense on the move. You know, a lot of teams have slowed it down versus us this year. And I think Houston is trying to, but I don't know if they can do it. Here's Benitez. Gets it in. De La Garza. That was some awful defending right there. But offside. Get out of here. Disallowed. Good discipline. Good discipline on the back line other than not marking people. But, I mean, would you really want to mark their central defender? I don't know. But anyway. Anyway, let's go. 33 minutes down. Jaguar has been booked. Patrasso wins it. Patrasso again on the wrong side of the field. No, he's not. He's over there now. I forgot. <laughs> We've put him at left wing. Um... It's just confusing for me because I'm used to Vargas being out there. He gets it to Jackson. Jackson looking, looking. Our playmaking target man. Piet bombs it forward. What a look to Romero. Centers to Kyle Aaron. He's not in position to score. Jackson Amel is, but he couldn't get him the ball. And now here's Houston on the counterattack. Benitez running around like a madman. Has to drop it all the way back to seat. Sights. And, oh, there's a bad touch by De La Garza, but we don't go after it for some reason. Seren gets it forward. Martinez now starts the attack. Piet gets back. Good man. Here's Clute going forward. Got him covered. Elise got him covered. Kyoto don't have him covered, but he heads it over, so that's fine. Thirty-seven minutes, thirty-eight. Let's go. Clock can roll. They're looking sort of shaky on the defensive side of things. Elise, of course, is playing well. Sights with a goal kick sends it down to Benitez. Bruno wins the header, but uh, Seren gathers it in. Elise out wide. Taylor is there, but uh, we can't win possession just yet. Centering pass to Kyoto. He's getting uh, hounded there by Romero. Andre wins it to Romero. Let's go. Start the counterattack. Gets it forward. Kyle Laren. Can he hit the target man? Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Nope. 
intercepted. Now Houston starts back the other way. This is a back and forth affair. Benitez, good stop by Lutweiler. He was bracketed there, but he did manage to get a shot off. Not a great shot, and Lutweiler was in perfect position. Funneled him right to the goalkeeper. That's what you're supposed to do. Seren, corner kick, drops it back to Benitez. He takes a touch. Andre's going to chase it down. See if we can start a wild and woolly counterattack here. Andre, the highlight continues. He's got Kyle Lahren, but Yago with a nice tackle. 43 minutes. If we can get out of the first half 1-0, I'd be happy with that. Yes, yes, 43 minutes. The clock is not exactly rolling here. Two minutes of stoppage time will be added. There we go. Now we're rolling. A minute down. All right. Klute with the throw in far side for Houston. Gets it to Elise. Elise looking, looking. He's double covered, but he gets it into the box. Headed out. Seren to Kyoto. One on one with the goalkeeper. What a stop by Lutweiler. My man is coming up big. Big, big, big. Big games. Big games. Big guy. All right. Jason Lutweiler, goalkeeper. He's kept us in the lead. Kyle Lahren gave us that lead just four minutes in. Got a lot of yellow cards going on here, but so far we're looking all right. Um, assistant coaches want us to dial it back. They want us to do what we usually do in the second half, which is retain possession and work the ball in the box. I don't. I don't know that that's exactly what I want to do, but it also might be what I want to do. It's hard to make that decision. You know, last game, we just let it go. We, we didn't make any changes against the Red Bulls, and it worked out. I'm trying to think, what would happen if we started retaining possession? We wouldn't be getting quite as many fast breaks as we're getting and if they're going to send their fullbacks forward we want to also counterattack them so maybe we do the opposite we switch to counterattack is that a good thing Counterattack, work the ball in the box, crazy weird stuff. I know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. All right, pep talk. Um, happy with your performance. Keep it up. All right, nobody responded to that, so that might not be a bad sign. Okay, here we go. Piet Taylor. Okay, now we want to while well, this is going on. We want to tell Jaguar to ease off tackles. Um, yeah, that's good. All right, so the first highlight is over. That was garbage anyway. We've got a lot of yellow cards. Here we go. De La Garza, Seren, Cabezas, Houston trying to work the ball downfield. Benitez gets it out wide to Kyoto. Benitez gets the header, but, you know, our defense was there, just not, not real good. All right, Taylor's been booked. We might want to tell him to ease off tackles. I think that's reasonable. We're going to have to tell our whole friggin' team to ease off tackles, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Duvern, another yellow card. Taylor's not looking so hot. 6.4 and a yellow card. He's going up against Elise. Here's Seren right down the middle. Takes a shot. Lutweiler has to make a save. I don't like that defense. Romero wins the header. Looks like no, Andre can't beat Benitez for the ball. Benitez takes it out wide. Taylor is there, though. All right, 56 minutes and counting. Here's our first highlight of the game. Taylor 
Gets it to Jackson. Centers to Petrasso. He drops it back for Andre. That was a terrible shot, I guess. Laren's going to have to pick it up. He's double covered. He gets tackled and stripped of the ball. Benitez now is going to start the counterattack for Houston. Elise has it. Tries to send it across the field, but Duvern is there. Here's a corner for Houston. Things are going crazy now. Bruno drops it to Benitez. Kyle Laren kicks it out of there, but Houston recovers, and there ends the highlight. All right. We've reached the 60-minute point. Elise sends it back post Duvern. Andre, you know, Houston is starting to get all the highlights now, and I'm not liking it. So after this highlight, we're going to make a change. Taylor to Cabezas. Elise! Oh, what a stop from Luke Weiler. All right. All right, so... I mean, let's go back to attack, retain possession. Do what our coaches wanted us to do. You know, maybe we get it, we got a little too passive, I think, defensively. Well, there must have been an offside because that was a great stop by Lutweiler that went out of touch. But anyway, um, now substitution-wise... We got so many issues. The fact that both Taylor and Duvern have yellow cards is troubling. Um, not to mention Piet. Like all of our defenders, except for Bruno, have yellow cards. I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to go with it. You know, stick with these boys and trust them a little bit, not to get red cards. Petrasso loses the ball going forward. Elise starts the counterattack. Martinez gets it to Benitez. He's going around Jaguer. Good stop by Lutweiler. Bruno was there helping him out. 62 minutes. Lyndon Gooch is coming in for Chris Clute. They've no, they've not changed their formation. Just sort of switched some people around. Gooch has gone on the left wing and they moved... You know, Iago is still there. They moved De La Garza over to right fullback. Dropped Cabezas down to central defense. That's interesting. Seitz going to send one deep for Gooch. Nope. Headed out of there by Duverne. Farfin. Here's Taylor. Can't beat Elise to the ball, but Elise doesn't do much with it. Right. We're going to go opposite. We're going to go direct passing. Jackson wins the header to Kyle Lair and gets it forward to nobody. He's going to get it back. Nope. Houston is starting to amp things up in the midfield. They're starting to... to uh, Go after it a little bit. Nice deflection. Andre gets it to Kyle Laren. To Jackson. He's got uh, Petrasso. Petrasso. Not a great pass. But he gets around one man. Two men. Three men. Gets the shot off. Not much of a shot. But he get it off. 72 minutes. Here is Houston. De La Garza has it. Centers it. Bruno heads it out. Can Romero get there? He does. And he gets brutally tackled. No call against Iago. But now Romero has to limp around. He's injured. So we're going to get Romero out of there. Potential thigh injury. We got Mane on the bench. That's fine. Then is there anything else we want to do? I think... I think we'll do this. Bring in Andre, central defense, Yaya Toure for his final game. Bring him off the bench, deep line playmaker. Let's go Yaya. See if he can make a play. Distribute the ball, 
long to one of our wingers, one of our strikers. Make a big play in your final game. Hopefully he gets a big round, a big ovation as he comes off the bench in the 70th minute, 75th minute. He's going to be retiring at the end of the season. I'd like to sign him on as a coach. I don't know if he wants to be a coach, but we'll give it a shot. Send him on a coaching course after the after the game. Here we go. Here's Jackson. Jackson gets it forward. Patrasso on the run. He's going to take it himself. Sights with the save. 83 minutes. Looks like our direct passing. Might be able to catch them in the counterattack. Pretty good. Petrasso sends it in. Bruno can't get to it. Again, there's Zimmerman on the back line. He's such a wall back there. But Laren wins it. Gets it back out wide to Petrasso, who loses it to the Gooch. All right. Taylor gets it forward to Jackson. He's going to drop it back, hopefully. Yep, back to Taylor. He's going to bomb it forward. Try to get Laren on the run. Doesn't work. Cabezas is back there. Gives them a little bit more mobility, I guess, at central defense. I mean, I suppose he can play back there. Here's Houston trying to build up an attack. Benitez has it. Gets around one defender, around two defenders. I think Duvern got in the way of that. He might have even passed that back to Lutweiler, but whatever. That was good defending. No matter how it happened, it was good defending. 85 minutes. Let's go. Jackson Amell wins the header, but he can't get it to Petrasso. And Houston starts another attack. Martinez... Forward again. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Just wide of goal. So I'd rather bomb it long than lose possession like this. Elise out wide. He stretched our defense wide. Taylor has to send, go inside. Benitez wins the header, but Lutweiler is there again. He is vying for man of the match here. He's made so many good stops. Here's Seren sends it in. Mane heads it out. Nobody there to chase it down except for Gooch. Gets it back out wide to Seren. Centers to Murillo. Into Elise who looked offside. And he is. Get out. Get out of my space. 88 minutes. 89 minutes. 4 minutes of stoppage time. We are four, 5 minutes away from an MLS Cup championship. Here's Toure with the throw in. Gets it not to Jackson. Seren intercepts. Centers to Zimmerman. Houston's going to look to play it. Gooch tries to get it forward. Jaguer is there. Gets it to Toure. To Jackson. Here we go. Out wide. Petrasso. Great pass. Centering pass to Laren. Can he put it away? Nope. Cabezas is there again. I mean, he's been a pretty good uh, move when they moved him down to central defense. We can't beat them deep anymore. Zimmerman to Iago. One minute, 20 seconds down in extra time. Here's Lyndon Gooch. Gets it stolen. Laren has it to Jackson Amell. Is he going to return the favor? Sort of. He doesn't bomb it forward. Laren's looking for some support now. He's going to get it to Yaya. Andre. Playing that Segundo Valente role. Manny gets it forward for Kyle Laren. He gets by one defender. Centers it. That was more of a cross, I guess, than a center. But it was whatever happened. It didn't work. Here's Bruno back on our end. Sends it forward to Yaya. Nice header up to Jackson, to Kyle Laren. Again, Houston's playing so deep we can't really bomb it forward, but that's fine. Jackson, great pass to Petrasso. Can he complete one of these crosses? He cannot. All right, a minute and a half left in extra time. Taylor with a throw in. Near sideline, gets it to Jackson. Jackson gets... Fouled by Seren. Get out of here. We're going to get a free kick. One minute to go. One minute, boys. Petrasso drops it to Lair. And that was an awful pass intercepted by Yago. 40 seconds. Here comes Houston on the counterattack. Benita is rushing the ball forward. Let's stop him. Bad tackle by Bruno. Gooch has it. Weak, weak attempt by Gooch. Out wide. Not even a threat. 10 seconds. Let's see how much time Lutweiler can stall. He bombs one downfield. There it is. Full time the impact. 
have won the cup. No, ch no celebration. No championship uh, banner. What's this all about? I guess because we're not at home, Houston's not gonna, not gonna allow us to accept the cup on their grounds. That's not very friendly or neighborly. No confetti. No nothing. Anyway. We win the MLS Cup. How about that? That's uh, really, really a surprise based on how we were doing just just a couple of weeks ago. Maybe like four or five weeks ago, we were in the midst of an awful streak. and We were just dying, losing every game, including games to Houston. You know, a lot of the teams we beat in the playoffs, we lost games to them at the end of the season. So that was really special, guys. Really, really special. Nobody gave you a chance, but uh, uh, let's be passionate. Yeah, let's be passionate. There we go. And pep talk. Look at these ratings here. Jaguar, Bruno, Duvern. The whole cent the whole defense played well in the second half. Offensively, we played okay. Jackson O'Mel made some really nice passes. Petrasso could have played better. But you know he made himself available for a lot of a lot of good plays, especially on the end of those passes from Jackson Amell. Uh, Andre played okay, sort of workmanlike. Same with Taylor. Toure came in, got a six point seven rating, so he did his job. Didn't do anything particularly spectacular, but he was a nice outlet for our players. So that's about all you can ask for. Analysis, we had eight shots, four on target. They had 23 shots, eight on target. Look at this heat map. They were all over the right-hand side trying to get the ball to Elise. And, you know, he, we kept him in check. He didn't do anything too terrible. Obviously, they didn't score any goals. So you got to give us some kind of credit. Houston did their thing. They won the possession battle. We won the fouls, but only 15 fouls. That's not bad. I'd take that. But anyway, great match, great game, great season. We win our first championship with the impact. Celebrate a double. I guess it's our second championship, technically, because we won the Canadian championship and now the MLS Cup. So we win the double. It represents an impressive turnaround in the fortunes for Nation, who at one point was set to be dismissed. I don't know about that. Retaining his job and prevent, proving doubters wrong will make his success all the sweeter. I guess so. Sort of being dramatic. There's Romero with a bruised thigh. Lucky Montreal celebrate an unlikely victory. Well, how do you do? I mean, I guess if you want to call it luck, fine. Uh, you were one of the big favorites for the competition, Mr. Texas Houston Soccer Paper. Enthusiastically indifferent. Um, we, um, I don't know. We weren't the only strong side. We had. I don't think we were the favorites at all. We were underdogs in every uh, every match. Anyway, how proud are you to add MLS Cup to the? Impact Silverware Cabinet, absolutely delighted. Special day for the club. After winning the cup, fans are going to be even more demanding. Won't this demanding? Won't this pile on extra pressure? No, I thrive on that sort of pressure. We're here to win championships. That's what it's all about. Oh uh, yes, uh, this is a great moment for the Impact. Are you looking forward you keep to building on this success and challenging for more trophies? Um. Yes, I think this team is capable of becoming a real force. We're very young. Got a lot of our young players coming back. Our veterans that are moving on are guys who, you know, at the end of their careers anyway. You know, we got two players basically retiring on us. So, you know, I think we're fine. No problems at all. What impact, haha, do you think lifting the MLS trophy will have on Romero over the coming weeks? I don't know that he's any different than anyone else but the whole squad is high on the achievement and Andre is no different we win two hundred thousand dollars for the cup I mean that's not not really a lot of money but anyway good job 
I'd like to see that prize money increased for winning the MLS Cup. That's pretty, pretty nominal affair. But anyway, Nation is one of the top American head coaches. Okay, that's good. Nation leads the impact to glory. Spokesman for the fans declared that Nation was doing great things for the team and that this prize was just reward for all of his hard work. That is so true. I can't tell you how true it is. Huh. Laurent Simon reveals his satisfaction with the season's achievements. I mean, he's one of the favored players at the club. He currently plays for the slumping LAFC. He was keen to praise impact players for living up to preseason expectations. What were our preseason expectations were not all that glorious, right? I mean, I'm not misremembering things here. Yeah, 10th place, 50 to 1 odds. So if you, you know, if you put a bet on us this season, you got some pretty good money. Hopefully there are a few people who made uh, made some bucks on us. But anyway, Montreal Impact Boss pleases the board with the cup. I should surely hope so. The board revealed that they're happy to have clinched the cup and praise Nason for guiding this team, yada, yada. Okay, okay. So, speaking of the board, very secure is all we got. 68%. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. Just want to advance it a little bit. There we go. Nation leads Montreal to glory. Still just very secure, 69%. Now, we went a day and got up a percentage. It's weird. So, club finances is, is dragging us down a little bit, I guess. Club philosophies are okay. Transfers club matches. I don't understand why this stuff isn't like 100%. Fans are very pleased with, pleased with the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um... Going to celebrate this cup championship. Going to be very happy about that. Then, going to come back with a postseason spectacular. Go over all the sort of comings and goings, movings and shakings. Go over the postseason awards. All that kind of stuff. Take a look at the players that we've signed a little bit early. And the players that we might look to sign in the future. So that'll be our next episode. So until then, we're going to celebrate this championship and, uh, yeah, have some good times. All right. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.